Dominus Fobiscum. Ecum Spiritu Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Lucam. Gloria Tibi Domine. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Verbum Domini. Praised be Jesus Christ. I shall always remember the first time I was privileged to view the last judgment of Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican. Having arrived at the Pontifical North American College in Rome to begin my last four years of study and formation and before priesthood ordination, I could not wait to see so many great works of art about which, up to that point, I had only read. Very soon after my arrival, I had the occasion to visit the Vatican Museums. A significant part of the visit to the museums is the Sistine Chapel. On the wall behind the altar of sacrifice is the Last Judgment, a wonderful fresco of the artist Michelangelo, which depicts the final coming of our Lord, at which the bodies of the just will be received into heaven and the bodies of the impenitent will be consigned to hell. In studying the fresco, I was struck by a figure of two of the just whose bodies are being drawn into heaven by the rosary. This figure led me to reflect again upon what a powerful prayer the rosary is in the church and the many graces which I have received through the praying of the rosary. (coughs) On October 16, 2002, Pope St. John Paul II published his apostolic letter on the Most Holy Rosary, Rosarium Virginis Mariae. He did so to commend to us the praying of the rosary in carrying out the new evangelization, in studying and living the Catholic faith with new enthusiasm and new energy, with the enthusiasm and energy of the first disciples of our Lord. For Pope John Paul II, the rosary 
is nothing other than to contemplate with Mary the face of Christ. It is a privileged way of contemplation of the face of Christ through prayer, by which we are able to bring Christ more fully into our lives and to the world, in order that he may transform us and the world. Through the rosary, our Blessed Mother herself assists us to look upon the face of Christ as she did from the moment of his birth, throughout his public ministry, at his passion and death, and in his resurrection and ascension to the right hand of the Father. Praying the Holy Rosary, we, like the apostles who prayed in the cenacle for the descent of the Holy Spirit, devote ourselves with one accord to prayer together with Mary, the mother of Jesus. Pope John Paul II commends to us the figure of Blessed Bartolo Longo, who had the Church of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary built in Pompeii, and who promoted the Christocentric and contemplative heart of the Rosary under the special support of Pope Leo XIII. Pope John Paul II reminded us that the Rosary, while Marian in character, is at heart a Christocentric prayer. In other words, although the prayer consists of a repetition of the Hail Mary, it centers on the mystery of the redemptive incarnation, the mystery of the coming of God the Son in our human flesh in order to free us from sin and everlasting death. It is the contemplation of the mystery of faith declared to the Blessed Virgin Mary by the Archangel Gabriel at the Annunciation. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There will be no end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Pope Paul VI rightly called the Rosary a compendium of the Gospel, for the mysteries of the Rosary are the essential events of the work of our redemption, especially as they were lived by the Mother of God. Praying the rosary, we with Mary reflect upon the events of the redemptive incarnation and thereby look upon the face of Christ as she did from the moment of his birth to, to his appearance to her after his resurrection. Looking upon the face of Christ, we hear his, we hear his invitation to unite our hearts to his sacred heart to unite our lives to his and with Mary, we give our fiat to our vocation and mission, which is daily conversion of life to Christ the High Priest, to whom we have been conformed in our deepest being by priestly consecration, and the transformation of our world into a civilization of love through the exercise of his pastoral charity. Contemplating the mysteries of the life of Christ, we reflect upon Christ alive in, in the church over the centuries and in the lives of individuals, the church, and the world today. In praying the rosary, we place ourselves in closest contact with what Pope John Paul II called the rhythm of human life. Prayer is our way to look upon the face of Christ. Therefore, if we are to carry out effectively the new evangelization, to bring Christ fully to our world, we must contemplate him, contemplate deeply his face by leading a Christian life distinguished above all in the art of prayer. Pope John Paul II noticed, noted the strong interest in spirituality 
among many in our secularized society and the influence of other religions, especially Eastern religions through their forms of meditation. In order that those who hunger for the spiritual life truly find it as alone it can be found in our Lord Jesus Christ, it is necessary that we as priests live in closest communion with Christ whose face we contemplate in prayer and that we lead the faithful in our priestly care so to pray. Today, we celebrate the memorial of Our Lady of the Rosary, recalling the victory of Christianity over the fierce Islamic attack at the Battle of Lepanto on this day in 1571. The feast was first given the title of Our Lady of Victory by Pope St. Pius V, who had asked the confraternities of the Holy Rosary at Rome to pray and conduct processions while the Battle of Lepanto was being fought. Pope Gregory XIII changed the title to Our Lady of the Rosary to underline more fully the prayer which had procured so many graces for those who were engaged in battle to defend Christ and his holy church. In commending to us the rosary as a daily prayer, St. John Paul II asked us to pray for two special intentions, peace and the family. The late Holy Father reminded us that the new millennium began with the unspeakable terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, and that terrorism, civil strife, and warfare are found throughout the world. Today, we are witnesses to a most barbaric attack on Christians in the Middle East, for whom we must pray daily. The rosary is our means of looking upon Christ, who alone brings us peace. At the same time, the praying of the rosary has fortified many of them to be true martyrs and confessors of the faith in our time. During the last millennium, the Roman pontiffs have frequently urged the faithful to pray the rosary for peace. Through the rosary, peace will be attained in our personal lives and in the world. Let us not forget the tremendous power of the rosary to spare God's people at the Battle of Lepanto. Secondly, the saintly pontiff asked us to pray for the family, the primary cell of society, and the first place in which we come to know, love, and serve God. He reminded us of how family life is under constant attack today and needs the help which comes from praying the rosary. Pope John Paul II commended especially the praying of the family rosary as an antidote to the many forces which can easily distance family members from one another and even destroy family life. In these days of the Synod of Bishops on marriage and its incomparable fruit, the family, which has been surrounded by so much confusion and error of the gravest nature, let us turn especially to the Blessed Virgin Mary, asking her intercession by means of the praying of the rosary. Each mystery of the rosary leads us to a deeper knowledge and love of Christ. They do not exhaust the mystery of his person, but they surely lead us to know him and to serve him. The rosary is to use Pope John Paul II's words, Mary's way, faith, silence, and attentive listening. By making our own the words of the angel Gabriel and Saint Elizabeth contained in the Hail Mary, we find ourselves constantly drawn to seek out afresh in Mary, in her arms and in her heart, the blessed fruit of her womb. She most perfectly fulfills her maternal vocation on our behalf by leading us to her divine Son in the Eucharistic sacrifice 
and its incomparable fruit, his body, blood, soul, and divinity, the heavenly bread of our earthly pilgrimage. Let us now, one with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Mother of Christ and Mother of the Church, lift up our hearts to the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus. Participating in the mystery of faith, let us contemplate his face and the face of every man and woman called to life in Christ. Let us place in the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus everything which makes up our life, all of which Christ desires to take up with us, to unite to the mystery of his suffering, dying, and rising from the dead. Through our daily praying of the, rose, of the Holy Rosary, by which we contemplate the face of Christ and thereby discover the deepest truth about ourselves and our world, may we be led, lead us, uh, let, lead us unfailingly May our daily praying of the Holy Rosary by which we contemplate the face of Christ and thereby discover the deepest truth about ourselves and our world, lead us unfailingly to give our lives to him and to receive the inestimable gift of his life in the Eucharistic sacrifice. Heart of Jesus, fountain of life and holiness, have mercy on us. Our Lady of the Holy Rosary, Pope St. Pius V, St. John Mary Vianney, Blessed Bartolo Longo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.